Hi everyone, this is Professor and Dust Science, and today I want to derive the energy eigenvalues of the quantum harmonic oscillator in another one of our videos on rigorous quantum mechanics. The harmonic potential is an iconic potential in both classical and quantum mechanics. Today we're going to calculate the possible energies that a quantum harmonic oscillator can have encoded by its energy eigenvalues. We will see that these energy eigenvalues cannot take just any value. Instead, the energy of the quantum harmonic oscillator is quantized. Our derivation will follow a rather elegant strategy first proposed by Paul Dirac that makes use of the ladder and the number of phrases. And just in case you need a little bit more convincing, this strategy is the same one that we use to drive the eigenvalues of the quantum angular momentum. And on top of all of this, the ideas that we will learn today also form the starting point of more advanced topics such as quantum field theory. So there is plenty to look forward to today. Let's go! Let's start by writing the Hamiltonian operator on the quantum harmonic oscillator. Although this is the expression that will look familiar to most of you, we learn in the video on the ladder and number operators that we can rewrite this Hamiltonian in terms of the ladder operators like this, or in terms of the number operator like this. Today we'll mostly use these two last expressions. Also, we're going to use several other results that we obtained in the video on ladder and number operators, so do make sure that you're comfortable with these operators. You can find all the necessary details in the video linked in the description if you need a refresher before you proceed. In order to advance the theory of the quantum harmonic oscillator, we need to consider the eigenvalue equations of this Hamiltonian. We will write it as h acting on lambda equals e lambda acting on lambda. In this expression, I am labeling the eigenstate with lambda and the eigenvalue with e lambda. I could have just used lambda rather than e lambda for the eigenvalue, but we will see in a moment that we will use the scalar lambda for something else. And also, using e lambda reminds us that the Hamiltonian is the operator representing the total energy of the system and that the eigenvalues are energies. So the objective of this video is straightforward. We want to figure out what the eigenvalues e lambda are. All we know for now is that they must be real numbers because we know that the eigenvalues of any Hermitian operator must be real numbers. But what we will discover is that the e lambda cannot be just any real number. They can only take some special values, which means that the energy of the quantum harmonic oscillator is, you guessed it, quantized. The derivation itself is rather fun, so let's get going. So this here is the eigenvalue equation for the Hamiltonian. Let's rewrite this equation spelling out the Hamiltonian in terms of the number operator. I can move the h bar omega dividing to the other side to get this. And then I can subtract one half lambda from both sides to end up with this. This here is just a scalar and I will call it lambda so that I can write the whole thing as lambda lambda. So what do we have? This is the eigenvalue equation for the Hamiltonian. And this is the eigenvalue equation for the number operator. We see that both equations have the same eigenstates lambda here and here. The eigenvalues are not the same, but as we found here, they are related to each other in a very simple manner. Lambda is equal to this. And inverting the equation, we have that e lambda is equal to this. We can also now see why we didn't call the eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian lambda. We were reserving that label for the eigenvalues of the number operator here. Given these results, if we figure out the eigenvalues of the number operator, then we can use this relation to immediately build the eigenvalues for the Hamiltonian. This is precisely the strategy that we will follow today. We'll work with the eigenvalue equation for the number operator here, and then at the end, we will use the eigenvalues lambda to calculate the corresponding energy eigenvalues E lambda. The very first thing to note is that just like we had for the eigenvalues E lambda of the Hamiltonian, for now, all we know about the eigenvalues lambda of the number operator is that they are real numbers because the number operator is a Hermitian operator. So 
let's move on to place some additional constraints on these lambda. The first constraint I want to look at is that lambda is positive or zero. To do that, consider the expectation value of the number operator with respect to an arbitrary eigenstate lambda. We can use the eigenvalue equation here to get lambda lambda, and we get this. The eigenstates are normalized, so we end up with lambda. Let's now write the expectation value of the number operator again. This time we spell out n in terms of ladder operators. Note that lambda a dagger here is simply the bra of a lambda here. This means that we can write this expression as the norm squared of a lambda, and this is always positive or zero. Bringing these two results together, we find that lambda is larger than or equal to zero. Okay, so this is our first constraint on the eigenvalues of the number operator. All eigenvalues of n are greater or equal to zero. The next step starts with a result from the video on ladder operators. The lowering operator a acting on an eigenstate lambda of the number operator is equal to this prefactor multiplying this new eigenstate of the number operator. So based on this, what is the action of the lowering operator on a number operator eigenstate lambda? It generates another number operator eigenstate with an eigenvalue that has decreased by one. Now, this is the result that we got in the video on ladder operators, and it is a general result. But what I want to emphasize now is a particular case of this general result, which is that the action of A on lambda can be equal to zero, basically killing the state. This will happen if lambda is equal to zero, because in this case, the prefactor here vanishes. Using these results, we're now going to prove that the eigenvalues lambda can only take integer values. To see this, consider the real axis and label the integer points 0, 1, 2, and so on. What we will do is to draw the eigenvalue lambda on this real axis. We already know that lambda is larger than or equal to 0. This means we can discard the negative region of the real axis as off limits for lambda. Now, let's imagine that lambda is here, somewhere within the allowed region and between the integers n and n plus 1. This corresponds to the eigenstate lambda. We can now apply the lowering operator to this state, and we get a new state at lambda minus 1, which is another eigenstate of the number operator whose eigenvalue is lambda minus 1. We can now apply a again, to get to a new state at lambda minus 2. In principle, we could continue down the ladder by applying a again and again and again. However, you may already see that we will eventually have a problem. Let's imagine that we've been applying the lowering operator sequentially, and after applying it n minus 1 times, we've landed here at lambda minus n minus 1. We can then apply it again, and we end up with this new state at lambda minus n. So here's the problem. If we now tried to apply it one more time, we would land somewhere in the forbidden region of negative values. So clearly something has gone horribly wrong in our construction because we've ended up in a state for which lambda is negative, which we know is impossible because of this condition up here. Let's reevaluate what we have. The fact that lambda cannot be negative implies that lambda must have a minimum value, which I call lambda min. But how can lambda have a minimum value if we can keep decreasing its value in steps of 1 by simply applying the lowering operator as shown up here? The answer, of course, is that at some point the application of A must kill the state. And this is precisely what this case here allows us to do. If we ever reach lambda equals zero, then the next time that we apply A, we kill the state, terminating the ladder. But look, we've just seen that we must terminate the ladder, otherwise we enter the forbidden region of negative values here. This means that zero must be one of the eigenvalues of the number operator, and it must be the minimum possible value lambda min.
Let's draw our real axis again. We've just seen that if we start with an arbitrary positive lambda, then in general we can apply the lowering operator enough times to eventually jump into the negative region of the real axis, which is forbidden. This means that an arbitrary lambda is in general not an allowed value of lambda because it leads to a contradiction. Instead, we need to terminate the ladder. To see how, let's draw our real axis yet again. We've seen that we can terminate the ladder by making zero here one of the allowed values of lambda, in fact, the minimum possible allowed value of lambda. As the lowering operator allows us to decrease the eigenvalue lambda in steps of one, then this means that the only other allowed values of lambda will differ from the minimum lambda by an integer multiple of one. And this, of course, means that the only allowed values of lambda are integers. Indeed, if we start with lambda integer, say n here, then by applying the lowering operator once, we get to n minus 1, and we can continue in this fashion until we hit 2, then 1, and finally 0, terminating the ladder. This is the only way in which we don't jump into the forbidden region of negative values of lambda. And here, right in front of you, is the solution to the question of the eigenvalues of the number operator. So let's recapitulate. This is the eigenvalue equation of the number operator. The eigenvalues of the number operator can only be zero or positive integers. Given this result, rather than labeling the eigenvalues by lambda, we typically use n and the eigenvalue equation becomes this. And this whole discussion means that the eigenvalues of the number operator are quantized. Okay, we're now ready to go back to the Hamiltonian of the quantum harmonic oscillator shown here in its various forms. We first write down again the eigenvalue equation for the number operator. Remember that at the beginning of the video we discussed that the Hamiltonian has the same eigenstates as the number operator, so we can write down the eigenvalue equation for the Hamiltonian like this. We also argued that once we have the number operator eigenvalues, we can immediately build the energy eigenvalues. They're simply given by h bar omega times n plus one half, where of course n is zero or a positive integer. So this is it the energy eigenvalues of the quantum harmonic oscillator are quantized. Let's draw our real axis again. And now we're going to place the allowed energy eigenvalues on it. The lowest energy eigenvalue corresponds to n equals zero and is simply one half h bar omega here. The second corresponds to n equals one and is three halves h bar omega here. The next one is for n equals 2, and it's 5 halves h bar omega, and so on. Each possible energy eigenvalue is separated by an energy h bar omega from neighboring eigenvalues. We call this h bar omega the quantum of energy. It is the minimum energy that we can add or remove from the system. If we think about a classical harmonic oscillator, if we were to measure its energy, any positive value would be possible, from zero to, in principle, infinity. We see that the quantum harmonic oscillator is very different. If we measure its energy, we can only obtain one of the discrete values on this axis. In addition, the lowest energy we can obtain is not zero. It's one half h bar omega. If we think about what zero energy means classically, it means that the particle in the harmonic potential isn't moving at all. The fact that the lowest possible energy is in zero for a quantum particle, in a way, means that we can never have such a quantum particle fully at rest. This lowest possible energy is usually called the zero point energy and is a fundamental feature of quantum particles. To finish, I want to explore the role that the ladder and number operators play in allowing us to explore the possible energy eigenvalues and eigenstates. Let's draw again our real axis, and let's add some of the allowed quantum harmonic oscillator eigenvalues. 
each of these eigenvalues is associated with an eigenstate, n minus 1 here, n here, and n plus 1 there. We already know how the ladder operators act on energy eigenstates, because the eigenstates are the same as for the number operator, and we know how they act on those. The lowering operator allows us to go from eigenstate n to eigenstate n minus 1, where we have removed one quantum of energy. The raising operator allows us to go from eigenstate n to eigenstate n plus 1, where we have added one quantum of energy. The other operator to consider is the number operator. In the video on the ladder and number operators, we simply claimed that n is called the number operator, but didn't really explain why it had that name in a lot of detail. We can now understand the reason why, and to do so, let's draw our real axis again one final time with some of the allowed eigenvalues. This here is the zero point energy, and it is the minimum energy that we can have in the system, and we use it as our reference energy. We then say that this eigenvalue here has one quantum of energy above the zero point reference energy, and the corresponding n is 1. This eigenvalue here has two quanta of energy, this one has three, and so on. Therefore, the eigenvalues of the number operator, the integers n, simply count the number of energy quanta. And this is why we call n the number operator. A quantum particle moving in a harmonic potential cannot just have any energy. It has to be in one of the allowed quantized energy levels. You can learn more about the quantum harmonic oscillator in our video about its eigenstates. And you can also explore similar ideas to the ones that we've discussed today in two rather different areas of physics, second quantization and angular momentum. And as always, if you liked the video, please subscribe.